Hey YouTube, it's your boy Big Ralph Man back with another video. Alright, before you give up on AP, listen to his answer. Alright, when he was asked about why the offense hasn't been successful. Um, when I look at the last nine weeks, I just look, you know, at a bunch of things. I'm gonna start first and foremost with the turnovers. Uh, I don't care what team you are, who you have at quarterback, who's your head coach, who's your OC. You're not gonna win games when you turn the ball over at the rate we've been turning over pretty much three times a game. Three times a game. That ain't gonna work on any team. But listen to this. I think we've had enough opportunities to punch the ball in and to give our team an opportunity to win games, and we haven't done that. And that's really a compilation of everything. Uh, when I go from play caller to uh, the play of our players to execution to details um, to the confidence that we're playing with. He said execution, detail, confidence. The offense just didn't have that. I'm gonna show you guys this particular drive and you don't be like, wow, because all I can do is watch the film. I'm watching the film and it's it's clear as day why he made these changes, all right? Now this particular play is the second quarter, 32 seconds on the clock, all right? Before this, the Bengals scored, but before that, Brock Bowers had a third down situation. A ball was thrown to him. He couldn't catch, it's Brock Bowers, man. Brock Bowers, he is a stud. So I'm not tripping on him for that, all right? And then the Bengals was just hot on offense. Raiders have a chance to pit something on the board because the Bengals get the ball at halftime. You have to pit something on the board. They come out, the first play hit Jacoby Myers for 17 yards. Run this, okay? Jacoby Myers is going to be right here. We get a motion from the tight end. All right, defense is showing massive blitz. They bail out of it. Perfectly thrown ball, executed perfectly, use a timeout. They are closer now to be in field goal range. We have 27 seconds on the clock, right? It's first and 10, right? They're gonna hit, end up giving the ball to Jacoby Myers for a screenplay. I, I mean, look y'all, I mean, this is, they, they use the last timeout. They are clearly a play away with 27, actually I think it's 24 seconds. Yeah, here we go. 23 seconds on the clock, all right? They use all their timeouts. The field goal range is right here. Look at this play. Jacoby Myers is right here. Watch this. Get the motion from the tight end. Defense is showing man coverage. I mean, the guy went all the way over there with the tight end. Garner's making a check. You need to pick up this first down. Spike the ball or go out of bounds. What the hell just happened? What the hell just happened? What, how do you, and this is why you watch film. This is why you pay attention to your team. What the hell is this? This is the Cincinnati Bengals, okay? You got Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow. Like, this team is explosive. The Raiders are two and six. You can't run a simple play. You got, we got, we got Garner Minshew clearly not in communication with his best receiver, Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers is running a curl route, it looks like. He's going up. He's stopping right here to look for the damn football. And now the football is being overthrown like it's supposed to be a damn go route. Lack of communication. There's more though, all right? There's 20 seconds on the clock still. Third and four, look at this play. We got Myers right here. Watch this, we get the same look, right? It's a, It looks identical, but it's a completely different play. And watch this. We, ca we call a screen that gets blown up. They can't even, they can't even run a screen play correctly. Bengals offense is hot, all right? Third quarter, they come out, they get the ball at halftime, two yards, right? They end up scoring a touchdown, okay? Look at this. The score is 24 to 10, all right? Is it over? I mean, it's looking like it's over, but it's not yet over. We have a third and three, all right? We are in the um, opponent's area. We're in Cincinnati's 45 yard line and we get a Garner Minshew fumble. So let's see, right? He's gonna get some crazy blitz, a gap blitz is gonna hit him. He's gonna end up fumbling the football. They can't even do a damn handoff. He can't even hand off the football to his own player. We, we get a motion out. We get a motion back in. They can't execute a damn handoff correctly. So to tie it all together, man, this is why I think you should not give up on AP yet. Um, but I think offensively, it just, it just wasn't going the way I wanted to go, and it didn't look the way I wanted to look. 
Um, and when it comes to the coaches, like I said, um, a lot of that stuff I'm gonna look at over the next 24 to 48 hours. Based off of how I think the structure of power works, I believe AP's the head coach, but he gives all the power to the DC and the OC. Luke Getze, who's your starting quarterback? Cool. What's the game plan you want to run? Cool. All that. AP just oversees everything. And he saw that this just wasn't working. And he is making an in-season change, which is something a lot of coaches don't do. He has no problem doing it. He knows exactly what he's looking for and what exactly he wants from his offense. And he wasn't getting it from Luke Getze. AP is going to hold you up to a particular standard. Listen to this. We know it's not your side of the ball. What message does the firing of the, the offensive coaches send to this team? You got to come in here and earn it every day. If you're not producing and uh, doing what you were brought here to do, you know what I'm saying, and, and what, what, what was envisioned before the before the season started, then you can't be replaced. This is, the, you know, NFL, you know, they say not for long, so uh, never get complacent. Never get complacent. AP is fighting for the Las Vegas Raiders. All right. He got rid of Luke Getze, the O-line coach, and the QB coach. All right. This man is fighting for y'all. He wants to be that coach. I know he does. I, I, I've watched all his interviews. He wants to be the Raiders head coach for a very long time. He wants to be in, he wants to win a Super Bowl for the Raiders. And he's doing everything in his power. And this new hiring. During the season, or this, um, I want to say a hire, it was kind of like a promotion, but with an hire is a smart move. Cause look at this long time NFL coach, Norv Turner to serve an advisory role in second stint with Raiders. AP promotes Scott to the offensive coordinator and brings his dad on board. His dad has experience when it comes to improving an offense. Cause look at this, I did some research. In 1990, Turner became the Dallas Cowboys offensive coordinator. That 1990 Dallas Cowboys offensive ranking was 26 in offensive points, 28th in offensive yards, 25th in first downs, and in 17th in offensive turnovers. When Turner took over the offensive coordinator duty, they jumped up significantly, all right? It was Turner's first season as an offensive coordinator ever. After missing the playoffs the previous year in 1991, the Cowboys made the playoffs and lost in the divisional round. Over the next two seasons, their offense got even better, jumping from the top 10 offense to the top three offense, and the team won consecutive Super Bowls. I ain't saying the Raiders are gonna win the Super Bowl now, but based off of this current situation that the Raiders are in, the offense needs significant improvements. You bring on this man's dad. This man right here used to be the OC for the Washington Commanders. You got years of coaching experience to try to help out this struggling offense. AP is turning over every rock, stone, whatever you want to say, and he is fighting for the for the Las Vegas Raiders and building a culture that, hey, man, you we, we, are, we are going to fight until the season is over. And I respect that, and that's why I say you should not give up on them yet. That's just how I feel about it. Let me know y'all thoughts. I'll see you on my next video. I'm out. Deuces.